And I'm showing up as an investor for the last 30 years, consulting as many years, coaching businesses for the last 15 years. And uh, I started a mentoring program five years ago to be able to connect trusted advisors with leaders so that we could do business, refer business to do joint ventures. <laughs> is our internal computer, our brain. So if we can have our brain have the skills, capabilities, the adaptability, the flexibility, the communication skills, all those things that we could show up in the world a lot better, a better version of ourselves, then all these tools become an extension of our arms, an extension of my mind, our minds. So the key there is, where do you start? Do you start with the external or do you start with the internal? And my thought is you do both uh, because we can uh, and as quickly as the tools show up. So. I think that's the defining point is to be able to have the flexibility in our mind, in our computer tool, to be adaptable and flow with this. I signed up for all the tools that he mentioned. I thought, oh, that's intriguing. Curious how I could use that. Uh, certainly the one about asking the questions, how many questions come, on, come up. Boy, that, that's a phenomenal tool in the right space for the right time, especially if I have a mind block as to what is the right question I should ask. Boom, something comes up. So I think it's having what I call flexibility, to be flexible, not intelligent as much, to postpone our intelligence to a point that we could say, let's hold off, there's something here. And how do I address it? How do I adapt? How do I show up a lot better so we could use this as better tools to be more effective and progress a lot better. And I'm starting to unlock those because I work on my mind and I work with technology tools. And so there is discoveries here. So I'm very optimistic about Apple, uh, not so much about Meta. Meta's uh, made a blunder, Twitter's made a blunder. We're going through growing pains, adolescence technology pains. Uh, the year, five years from now, 10 years from now, is going to be even better than it is now. From a technology standpoint, how we show up as human beings, it's up to us. The, tech, the tools I have to be in the background, I think not in the foreground, uh, because otherwise you defocus where the end result should be. So if you use it in the background, I think those tools are for us to be able to test or try, experiment, intrigue figure out how that helps us uh, be better coaches, better communicators, better consultants. How do we show up a lot better? So I think it's more for us than to be able to really teach our clients how to use that. That's a different field. And also it would take the focus away. The, the thing to keep in mind is what's the objective? What are we trying to do? And quite frankly, the objective is how do we communicate anywhere in the world at any time succinctly to get the best results? And we're transforming into a world where already they're, they're, they're planning Mars or they're planning, planning other spaces. So paper's good if you're face-to-face, -face, but if you're not face-to-face, -face, like most of us, all of a sudden, then we have to use whatever to technology tools that can help us develop the relationship, communicate either challenges or opportunities and be able to provide alternative solutions and the action, who takes the action. And of course, in our cases, it's our clients. But in my case too, I look for joint ventures collaboration. How do we communicate? How do we move faster, better together? And when there are obstacles to be able to overcome them and hopefully we could use the tools to make it easier for us to show up just like Zoom. Probably we're getting more segmented. We're more specific. The more tools we have, we get into an area that we prefer particular tools. And we, in a world of 8 billion people, there's room enough for doing that so that we could show up with people that like this particular tool or certain types of processes and we could thrive a lot better, communicate a lot better. So that may be the case with so many diverse tools that are showing up that perhaps uh, we start to prefer others, other tools, other processes, and then of course, other client segments is so, more important is how do we expand 
our supercomputer in our brain. That's where the real key is. And yesterday I saw the Evolva where they're implanting a computer chip in the brain to be able to correct so malfunction, some disease, some things. Um, I think it's beginning stages. I would love to be able to participate in some of that in the future. And I'm doing that now in multiple ways, both soft and hard. Well, by that, I mean, I'm, I'm focused more in flow states and being able to develop individual team and corporate flow states to be able to communicate more effectively. And to do that, I'm finding a flow state can happen in our brains consistently by stimulating the brain a lot more. And I think that has a lot more quantum leaps to be able to get us further. So if my brain is 10 times, or as Stephen Cutler says, 500% better by going through flow states, then I'm, that intrigues me. And, and he's written a book uh, called Superman. And so with that, that intrigues me. And I'm finding after just experiencing reading books and experiencing myself, I'm finding that there is clarity, effectiveness, uh, more objectivity, more performance that I'm having, not just physically, which I do, but also mentally. So I'm in that path. I think the, the real superhuman starts with us. But you judge by results. Are you getting better results than you were before? Are you progressing? I mean, making progress. And how did you get there? Probably as not as a relevant until it becomes relevant. <laughs> not until you want to have consistency, better results, exponential results. One of the speakers that spoke before really resonated for me when he said that the world, the business world, which I live in, is moving from a linear results to exponential results, linear to exponential, just in the last 10 years. And so the key is, well, how do we do that? And I'm starting to try to uncover how do we do exponential things? So sure, using the right tools at the right moment, right, the right person defining the problem, coming up with alternate solutions. But here's what I'm finding more and more is that exponential exp aspect is that continuous improvement, continuous improvement. And I think that was uncovered before decades ago in terms of the Japanese methodology. Can I continuous and never ending improvement? But here's what I'm uncovering. Maybe the next generation of that improvement is to be able to consistently get into a state of flow and exceed that continuously, not by much, but enough to make progress continuously. So day after day, and as they were talking about exponential growth, is if you compounded 1%, 2% per day growth, results, improvement, then you're going to have exponential growth. Now, that may be exponential growth in skills. How does that translate into real results, revenue uh, or market share or clients? I think inevitably it does. The better companies like Apple succeed. All of them, all of the other companies are letting go people or losing money. Apple is not. They're succeeding. And that's intriguing in itself. So that's, I think, part of the thing, Sarah, to answer your question is what results are you getting? And can you now be on a path to exponential growth? What is it that they really want? What is it that our clients want? And I'm, I'm stretching out, but I'm thinking that they want better ideas, breakthroughs, innovation, better, faster, collectively. And how do you get that, whether it's with music, like you said, or with uh, sound or visual, because people have different perspectives. That's our objective. How do we get better ideas? powerful ideas that actually work together well, because here's what's happened. We're transitioning from a business world where it's been control and command to a collaborative environment. It's not going fast enough. And it's not going fast enough for a lot of different reasons. Uh, you have the command and control guy, Elon Musk, to people that perhaps with um, Apple and, uh, and they have more of a collaborative environment. 
That seems to be a better answer. How do you know? Well, you look at the results financially or how they show up. So the key is that leaders, from what I understand, don't know enough how to transition because they're so used to having all the answers. So the leader has the answers. That's how they rose up. That's how we teach them through school and university and share my attest to that. They are taught not to ask questions, but to provide answers. And so the leader that shows up to the top and all their hierarchy, all the C-levels have the answers, but they're not the right answers all the time because the answers, quite frankly, bubble up from the point of execution within the organization. And so the transition that leaders have to have is going from a space of having the answers to having the better quality questions, asking the question. Those are the ones that thrive in an organization, helps their organization thrive a lot better. So how do you get to that is probably through the things that she, uh, Mary mentioned is to be able to get in a state of flow. A musical space is the ones I see them, when they get in, when they're accomplished, when they're playing the piece for performance, it's a flow state that allows us to be creative, innovative, think better, more peaceful. It relaxes our super brain to really be creative and come up with those innovations. And if we collectively put those people, the, the group or team or company in the same space where they can all bubble up ideas, that becomes phenomenal. And I think that's where we're heading. Really tools that we could use to enhance our performance, our brain and our body. And different things that have come up just recently this year, they discovered that they can extend the body, the physiology of a body longer. They're continuing to do that. And we know that we're in the beginning of those discoveries. And I think being aware of those technologies are quantum leaps uh, to be able to, as uh, I forget the fellow's name, but as he said it, to be able to really rejuvenate the year the annual year, year by year, so that aging doesn't happen. So there's some phenomenal things happening from a physiology standpoint and also from a mental standpoint uh, to be able to really address the neurons, to be able to enhance the neurons so that we have more clarity, can communicate better and be much more effective. And doing that with different devices like transcranial direct current stimulation and that seems to be able to work out really well, not only for action athletes, adventure athletes, to have high levels of performance. They're doing that already with uh, sports, uh, professional sports, but also doing it for people that have some sort of, oh, uh, they want to have a, a lot better clarity, a lot more focus, a lot more alertness. Those, I think, are significant tools to enhance the body the brain and how we show up. Of course, we use these external tools. So I'm excited about what's coming up in the next just a few years.